Welcome to Voice in the Wilderness Ministries. It is our pleasure to do the next to broadcast the next two weeks from Sunnyside Mission Center in Sunnyside, Houston, Texas. We thank you for the opportunity to bring the Word of God into your wonderful ministry and to help you advance the, the uh, kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Sunnyside Mission Center is a program dedicated to inner city youth at discipleship into the arts and the music for the broadening of the mind and the spirit of the youth with so much talent and so much capability and ability to make a difference in this world. We want to be part of what God is doing here. So for the next two weeks, our broadcast will come from Sunnyside Mission Center in Houston, Texas. We thank you all for having us here. May God bless you, and may this word bless and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In his name, amen. Good evening. Welcome to Voice in the Wilderness Ministries. Once again, it's our distinct pleasure to broadcast from one of our wonderful venues that have brought us in to, to bring the word and to make visible those things of the ministries that you don't often get a chance to see. Tonight, we're going to talk about one of the most neglected biblical doctrines. In fact, I think it's the most neglected biblical doctrine in the United States of America it's, and also around the world. And it is the fear of the Lord. The Christian faith has accelerated and multiplied because there was always a sense of the fear of the Lord. Understanding the love of God, the capacity of the love of God is to understand what the wrath of God is capable of being. Many times we have seen the wrath of God poured out in judgment on this earth. So we know that he doesn't need any rhyme or reason to express his dismay at the events that are going on in the world and subsequently judge uh, outside of the box of human interpretation. Last year, we endured the kind of judgments of God that mankind has not seen for a while. In March, we opened with a pandemic that everybody and their brother thought God was going to deliver us from and did not deliver us from. Secondly, we endured race riots. Those race riots are birthed on human feelings and not spiritual conditions. And God has allowed the feelings and the torment of those that have been oppressed in silence to be voiced and he's allowed those voices uh, of division to rise above the common unity that the Christian faith is and then on top of all of this was a nasty and divisive political election that everybody and their brother believed would turn out a certain way and did not so the only reasonable conclusion for the half a million deaths that have occurred in this country and the political divisiveness and the racial divisiveness is the church has lost its ability to preach the gospel to change the hearts of men and now we stand on our own wisdom and our own intellect and our own emotions and now we stand a divided nation and the only thing that will bring us back together again is if the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached in sincerity and in truth this is not the only life we will live. We will leave this earth and spend eternity in one of two places. And if we do not manifest, demonstrate, and articulate the importance of the fear of the Lord in this lifetime, that we may come under the umbrella of the salvation of His Son and learn what it means to love God and learn what it means to love other people and learn what it means to impart to those coming behind us that are the stewards of the responsibility of the message we so reason so often neglect in our own children and our own hearts we have become a selfish self-aggrandizing self-promoting self-entitled people that do not do the work and do not do the labor of the gospel but simply take the easy way out the gospel is never easy. And the fear of the Lord must be returned to the pulpits of America if America is going to survive the onslaught of the enemy that no longer fears the Christian faith and no longer fears what we represent and no longer fears the potential of God using us to make a difference but keeps us in a constant perpetual state and a geopolitical, racist, business and religiously divided people who want their own opinion to matter more than the word of God. Amen? We are taught as pastors first and foremost to teach our people about God himself and not ourselves. And when we talk about the fear of the Lord, 
We are instructed in Psalm 34, verses 11, to teach our people the fear of the Lord and to be taught by our leaders the fear of the Lord. Psalm 34, 11, 16 says, Come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see the good? Keep thy tongue from speaking evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ear is open unto their cry. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and deliver them out of all of their troubles." The Lord is nigh unto them that are a broken heart and save as such as have a contrite spirit. The New Testament equivalent is found in Hebrews 12, 28 through 30. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have the grace of God, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. In 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1, the Bible says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us, per let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Psalm 25, 14 is the, is the scripture we're going to talk about. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them their covenant, his covenant. Mine eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and to them he will show him his covenants. Rightfully understood, God does not operate in the life of a human being outside of covenant. God takes his relationships as permanent ones devote with the most devoted people that take his name. If you call yourself a Christian, let me reiterate as I have many times that you are not in a relationship with God. You are in a covenant. You should treat God just as well as your wife or your husband and even more considering the cost of the, his part of the covenant. All you had to do is receive it. He sent his son to die for your sins so that you can be reconciled. He paid a debt he didn't know because you had a debt you couldn't pay. So to that end, this covenant should be one that you should be reverent of, that you should be fearful of, and that you should be obedient to. There is no easy way out of eternity. You will spend eternity in one place or another. It does not matter what happened to you on earth before you met Jesus Christ. What matters most is that you get this message out to him so that as many people, as many people as possible, can hear the word of the Lord that you have been blessed with and you have understood so that they may also know the love of God in Jesus Christ. When we come to the subject of the fear of God, the Bible speaks of the fear of the Lord in 295 verses. Scripture speaks of men fearing God, his name, his law, his word. In the Old Testament, there are 235 references to the fear of God. In the New Testament, there are 43 references to the fear of God, which, by the way, is the same number of references as man's love to God. The fear of God and the love of God cannot coexist one with the other. Amen? That's why in the New Testament, when it comes to our fear of the Lord, it is a byproduct of our love of the Lord. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible proclaims that the fear of God Fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, and those who drink deeply of it shall have the blessings of God in this life and the life to come. However, those who reject the fear of the Lord will end up in the ways of death. The fear of God is the predominant response and the fundamental attitude we portray towards God, His Word, His law, and His name that God desires. That is why it is mentioned more times than any other aspect of virtue vital piety. Loving God is not enough according to the Bible. We must also fear him. If we take the Bible seriously, the fundamental aspect of our relationship to God should be the fear of the Lord. Fear goes hand in hand with love. Love is on the positive side. Fear the negative. Love prompts one to do what pleases God. Fear prompts one to refrain from what displeases God. 
So what is the fear of the Lord? It is that affectionate reverence by which the child of God bends himself humbly and carefully to his Father's law, enabled by the Spirit and the desire and power of the Holy Ghost. His wrath is so bitter and his love so sweet that hence springs of an earnest desire to please him, and because of the danger of coming short of his own from his own weakness and the temptations, a holy and watchfulness fear that we might not sin against him. Many great men of God have talked about the fear of the Lord and their doctrines and their relationship to life on earth. John Murray says, the fear of God is the soul of godliness. John Donnie says, as he that fears, as he that fears God fears nothing else, so that he that sees God sees nothing else. William Garnell says, we fear men so much because we fear God so little. The fear of God is the greatest antidote against the fear of man. That's anonymous. John Calvin said, nothing is more powerful to overcome temptation than the fear of God. Righteousness flows from only one principle, the fear of God. He was anonymous. The learning of the Christian man ought to begin with the fear of God, Thomas Craner. The essential ingredients of the fear of God are correct concepts of the character of God, a persuasive sense of the presence of God, and a constant awareness of our obligation to God. A.W. A. Tozer, the great, the great preacher, said, No one can know the true grace of God who has not known the fear of God. The fear of God, John Trapp says, is both a virtue and a keeper of other virtues. This was such a priority that men often talked about the importance in your relationship with God with the fear of God. And it saddens me what I see. If anybody, if any generation has ever forgotten it, it's this one. The things I see from the pulpits of America and the nonsense that's going on, a brazen, deceptive, false prophetic, over-promising, humanistic, theological pablum, spiritual humanism, literal liberalism pouring in. This is not a political position. This is not even a racial position. This is not a gender position. This is either that or nothing. There is no sidebar, and there is no there is no comma to the truth. There is no and, whatever it is that you believe. And this country is far tied up in things that are not going to matter six months from now, or in eternity. And the things that divide us demonstrate us we do not understand the things that unite us, even in the church. The love of God is tempered by the fear of the Lord. The consequences of our actions disappointing and demonstrating a lack of obedience has caused the judgment of God to come upon this nation and he is not finished unless we repent. If we do not turn from this, if we do not turn our hearts back to God and not our television sets or our computers or our sports stars, movie stars, music stars, television stars, and all of that, and turn our hearts first and foremost to the bright and morning star, this nation is not going to make it. No matter how much high-sounding, Amazon book-selling, motivational speakers that come from a pulpit, you can pour them on. The truth is still the truth. And nobody wants to be the bearer of bad news. But I am telling you today by the Spirit of God how to have life and how to have it more abundantly. It takes more than just a tongue-in-cheek confession and a dipping in a baptismal pool to get yourself to heaven. Your heart has to change. Your thoughts have to change. Your reason for being has to change from an old man to a new man, and you have to make a conscious decision to cast off the things of this world in the fear of God and come under the abuse of people who don't think like you do, who think everything's going to be all right when they're standing on a track and a train's coming down the road. This is not going to end well unless the church learns the fear of the Lord and preaches the gospel to a lost and dying nation. And it doesn't matter whether it's in a big church or it doesn't matter whether it's in a small mission field, the gospel must reach the world in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Let's talk about the Old Testament. First of all, the fear of the Lord increases to wisdom. Wisdom, that tired old theological gift of God that God cherished more than any other. Do you know behind salvation, the number two gift God wants you to have is wisdom? Biblical, do you know that the first gift of the Spirit outlined in 1 Corinthians 12 for the church is not speaking in tongues? It is not prophecy. It is wisdom. It's discernment. It's being able to identify, both in the spirit world and the human, those forces that are for you and are for against you. The scripture says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. It is of that spirit of Antichrist where we had said he would come and even now already is in the world. Let me just put a... We have a lot of people internationally that probably don't understand what I'm talking about right now. And I want to speak to you for just a minute. The fear of the Lord is just as relevant in your country, as it is in this one. If you do not operate and abide by the the fear of the Lord and the motivation with which you are a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, an apostle, or whatever title you've given yourself, that comes with the responsibility of teaching and leading and keeping your children and your people centered on God as the source for everything they get. If you do not do that, your ministry's going to fail, you're going to fail, and your people are going to fail because he's assigned you the responsibility to tell your people the truth. It doesn't matter whether you're in the United States of America. It doesn't matter whether you're in Pakistan. It doesn't matter whether you're in Kenya, Uganda, Nepal, London, Israel, Jordan, Far East, Philippines, or wherever you are part of Voice in the Wilderness Ministries. The same application applies to you. Do not look at America as one who's figured it all out. Of all these countries, we are the least of them that have figured it out. So honor God where you are. Don't be envious of another nation, especially ours right now. And while we have a lot to offer, and while we have been blessed, we have forgotten this. And if we have forgotten this, ultimately... We're no better than anybody else. We have been assigned the blessing of Christ to this world, and we had better get back at that. So please, wherever you are, wherever God's called you, I don't care if you're in the smallest village. I don't care if you have the least of all of them. You are blessed of God that you've been chosen to lead your village, your people, your city, your country back into a godly nation. That's your job. It does not matter what the circumstances around are you. If you'll fear the Lord more than you'll fear whatever's going on, you'll be able to accomplish that through the name of Jesus Christ. Let me go on. Old Testament scriptures. The Bible says, Proverbs 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge, but he that despises wisdom and his, but fools despise wisdom and destruction. Proverbs 16, verse 6, but loving kindness and truth, iniquity is Iniquity is atoned for, and by the fear of the Lord, one keeps away from evil. In Job chapter 1, verses 1 through 8, you look at a godly man who endured trial and maintained his integrity and his fear of the Lord. Job 1, verses 1, the Bible says, There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was blameless, upright, fearing God, and turning away from evil. In verse 8, The Lord testifies unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Psalm 34, 11, the Bible says, Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. In Psalm 119, verses 38, Establish thy word to thy servant as that which produces reverence for thee. God wants you, first and foremost, to know and understand that He has chosen you in the fear of the Lord. 
Proverbs 1, verse 29, the Bible says, Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, judgment came upon him. Proverbs 2, 1 through 5, the Bible says, Receive my sayings, treasure my commandments within. Make your ear attentive to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. In Proverbs 10, 27, the fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. In Proverbs 14, 26, and in the fear of the Lord, there is a strong confidence and his children will have refuge. Proverbs 14, 27, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may avoid the snares of death. Proverbs 13, verse 14, the Bible says the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life discern aside from the snares of death. Proverbs 19, 23, the fear of the Lord leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. In Proverbs 22, verse 4, the Bible says the reward of humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of the Lord brings a snare, but he who trusts, the fear of man brings a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord will be exalted. Ecclesiastes 8 and 12, actually let me start at verse 11. Ecclesiastes 11, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, the hearts of the sons of men are fully set in them to do evil. Although a sinner does evil a hundred times and may lengthen his life, still know that it will be well for those that fear the Lord, who fear him openly. But it will not be well for the evil man, and he will not lengthen his days like a shadow, because he does not fear God. Genesis 22, verses 12, the Bible says, Stretch not your hand against the lad and do nothing to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. In Deuteronomy 4, verse 10, the Bible says, Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, So assemble the people to me, that I may let them near. My word, so they may fear me all the days of their life on the earth, that they may teach their children. Deuteronomy 17, verses 19. And it shall be with him the king, and he shall read it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God by carefully observe the words of all his law and his statutes. Psalm 31, verse 19. How great is thy goodness, which thou hast stored up for those who fear thee, which thou hast wrought for those who take refuge in thee before they do the sons of men. Psalm 34, verses 7, The angel of the Lord encamps round about fear that, them that fear him and delivers them. Psalm 34, verse 9, O fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no want to them who fear him. In Psalm 36, verse 1, the Bible says, A psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, transgression speaks to the ungodly within his heart. There is no fear of God before his own eyes. That scripture is fulfilled in Romans 8, 13, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, you shall live. Psalm 86, 11, The Bible says, Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth and unite my heart to fear thy name. Psalm 90, verses 11 and verse 12, He who understands the power of thine anger and thy fury, according to the fear that is due thee, teach us to number our days that we may present to thee a heart of wisdom. Psalm 103, verse 11, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards them that fear him. Psalm 103, verse 13, Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. In Psalm 115, verse 11, You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. In Hebrews 13, verse 6, So that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid of what a man can do to me. In Psalm 145, verse 19, He will fulfill the desires of those who fear Him. He will also hear their cry and save them. Amen? Psalm 29, 13, the Bible says, Because the Lord draws near me with their words and honor me with their lip service, but they remove their hearts from me and their reverence for me consists of tradition learned by Man, let me tell you how important that is. We live in a generation that worships God, but their hearts are far from Him. They love the show. They love the lights. They love the sound systems. They love the entertainment. They love the drama. It's, it's theater, and men love theater. 
But if your hearts are not perfect to you, a greater judgment is coming to you because you are entering the presence of the Lord under a false pretense. When you put smoke screens and glitter from the ceiling, copying the intimate presence of the Lord that comes so close to a man, he can almost touch him, it, defy, it demonstrates your ignorance or disobedience to everything that's been taught up to this point right now, and you bring yourself into this kind of judgment unnecessarily because you thought you could duplicate something that only God can create. So please be very careful. Well, pastor, that's the Old Testament. We live under grace, okay? Let me call your attention to the words of Jesus Christ. In Matthew 10, 28, the Bible says, Fear ye not them which kill the body and are not able to kill the soul, but fear him who is able to kill the body and the soul, both to destroy you, the body and soul, in damnation. In Luke 1, verse 50, the Bible says, And his mercy on them that fear him, from generation to generation. That's the words of Christ. Luke 12, verse 4, And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of those who kill the body, and after, those they, after that there's no more they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear the one that after he has killed you has authority to cast you into hell. I tell you, fear him. Let me square this right off where we need to be. We have lived in a generation that says God loves me just the way I am. There is no more blasphemous statement than you can make concerning him. If you were all right just the way you are, you wouldn't need a savior. You would not need his son to leave his place of prominence, come down to this earth and live a sinless life and give himself on a cross to pay a price for you that you would never be able to repay. There is nothing Nothing more godless than when some clueless minister stands up and says something like that. To the saved, God's love is limitless. He's demonstrated that at the cross. But as a general statement, there is nothing more wrong with that statement. Well, the Bible says God loves the sinner and hates the sin. Well, then why does he send the sinner to hell? Or why does the sinner send himself to hell? God abhors the wicked. God abhors evil. God abhors disobedience. God abhors rebellion. And that's why hell was made in the first place other than for the angels. Man, God never sends anybody to hell. Mankind makes himself go to hell with his disobedience to God. So let's be very clear here. Jesus Christ did not come to this earth so that we could behave the way we want to, talk like we want to, live like we want to, and believe like we want to. We must surrender ourselves to the Lord, to the leading of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit takes you to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ takes you to the Father. Without that, no human being is going to have access to God, no matter how important they or their religion seems to sound it, or pious that they sound. Illusions are deceptive. Turn your heart to God. Acts 9.31, the Bible says, So the church throughout all of Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace, being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. It continued to increase. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1, Therefore having these promises, dearly beloved. What dearly promises? Four verses later, he says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you unto myself, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse, chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. In Ephesians 5.21, the Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Philippians 2, verse 12, so then my beloved, as you've, just as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now so much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. 1 Peter 1.17, the Bible says, and if you, if you call upon the Father, who without respect to persons judges according to every man's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay here on earth. 1 Peter 2, 17, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Revelation 14, verse 6, 
And I saw another angel flying mid-heaven, having an eternal gospel to preach those who live on the earth and to every nation, tribe, and tongue of people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who had made the heaven, the earth, and the sea, and the spring, and the, and the spring of the waters. Now let's break this down a little bit. What, is this, what does it mean to obtain... To live in the fear of the Lord. First of all, if you live in the fear of the Lord, it is the first step to obtaining spiritual wisdom. Job 28, verse 28, unto man he said, Behold, fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Psalm 90, verse 12, the Bible says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply, apply our hearts to wisdom. Proverbs 12, 15, the way of a fool is wise as an old eye. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearketh unto counsel is wise. Proverbs 10, 23, as it is sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. Proverbs 18, verse 15, the Bible says, The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Proverbs 19, verse 20, Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise to the latter end. So let's talk about the latter end. Jesus Christ talks about who is going into heaven and who's not, who is not going into heaven. And he explains how the sheep will be divided from the goats. In Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. But whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house on sand. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Luke, 15, verse, Luke 21 verses 15 through 19. And I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist in your patience Possess ye your souls. God wants you to be wise beyond your years. God wants you to know, to know his goodness in this world. Number two, the fear of the Lord is the introduction to one spirit of the consequences of evil and develops a personal abhorrence of evil. Christian people should not be pleased with any kind of evil in their life or in anyone they're concerned about or in fact in this world at all. God has told us to... Repent of the evil. The scripture says, Psalm 97, verses 10 through 12, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hands of the wicked. Light is shown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you his righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Psalm 119, verses 133, Order my steps in your word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Psalm 121, verses 7 to 8. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Matthew 6, 13. The Bible says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. John 17, verse 15. The Bible says, I pray that thou should not take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from the evil. Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Lastly, the fear of the Lord is the God's antidote for any consideration of disobedience. You are either obedient to God or you are not. John 14, verse 15, the Bible says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And John Luke 6, 46, And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Romans 6, verse 16, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to obey, whether, obedient, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Matthew 7, 21, I'm going to shut it down here. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. This was a lot more to this than 30 or 40 minutes will allow, but we need this time together. I've said all that, 
And this is why Dee wanted it to be the first message we tape tonight. The fear of the Lord is a critical element in your relationship with God. Next to the cross itself, I believe there is no greater element than the fear of the Lord in a man's life, confirming the covenant he has with God. This God is not a play toy. He's not a cosmic butler. And I know that a lot of people who claim to be ministers prance and dance and do all kinds of stuff and say all kinds of things and offer all kinds of alternatives and offer all kinds of evil in the place of the truth. This is a holy God we serve. And you had better understand that without holiness, no man is going to see the Lord. And the scripture says, do not be deceived by the words of vain men. Do not let somebody who has a large crowd, convince you of any other. This is the single most important doctrine. This is what drives people to Christ in the first place. It's not going to end well for the sinner. It never has, and it never will. And this is no exception. And just because we live in a society that's more advanced than any other society does not dismiss us from the coming judgment when we leave this earth, either in the rapture or in physical death, of what's going to happen. I know I'm not the most popular guy when I stand up here and say this, but some Somebody's got to be a watchman for the souls of men. You got to stop preaching to each other and start trying to reach some people that need to hear the gospel. Don't impress me with what church you're preaching at. Impress me where you're going and preaching to the lost, to the dying, to the hopeless, to the ones in darkness. That's nothing wrong with preaching in a church once in a while. But what are you saying to the world? The problem is we have more of the world than we have God in us. We can't preface this any longer. There are too many souls that hang in the balance. If you understand what I've told you tonight, I'm going to ask you to join your hands with me in prayer. And I'm going to ask you to open your hearts to what these words say. And I know we went through a lot in a very short period of time. But I need every Christian, here and internationally, to take these words most seriously. For whatever motive it is that you're doing this, if preaching the gospel, reaching the lost, and discipling people... It's not your motivation for anything outside of your expression of worship, then there's something wrong. And we have to rectify it, and now's as good a time as any. It's not about the performances that we make. Genuine worship comes in the spirit of the fear of the Lord, a reverence that we're even allowed to come that close to Him. So tonight... As we come together to close this, may the name of the Lord Jesus Christ pierce your heart. May you forgive everybody. May you love everybody. And you love them by telling them the truth. More people than not are not going to like this message because more people are profiting from the Christian faith than they ever have before. And it's far easy to make it a popularity contest than it is an eternal struggle for the souls of men. If you remove the salvation of the soul in the redemption of the grace of God to a fallen sinner, you have become something else entirely. And all of those other parts of life on this earth as a Christian, as a disciple, as a leader, all of the things church represents, the fellowship and community of believers, it doesn't mean anything if your heart's not set towards God and the fear of the Lord. I submit to you tonight these words of love and compassion packaged around a warning. All watchmen and all prophets prefaced what they said with the option that the love of God still remains open for you. If you have not been to the cross of Jesus Christ, if you have not known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have not had your sins removed, but you just walked into church and started playing, or if you called yourself a minister or an evangelist or an apostle and you haven't won one soul to Jesus Christ, for heaven's sake, for heaven's sake, grow up and start over again. Because God is unconcerned with your importance or your title. But in the end, how did you treat the least of these? If that's your heart tonight, I want you to join me in prayer. As we come together and we minister to each other for this short moment, May your hearts be purged with conviction. May God's love fill you and give you the reason to keep going. If you have struggled in the last year, we want you to know that God's still on the throne. And what seems hopeless is not beyond His grace or His love for you. 
tonight as we come together. Let us honor him with the truth, and let us honor him with lifted hands and humble hearts and gratitude that extends beyond everything that he can do for us to what he's already done for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come together tonight, may your spirit and your soul live in us, Father, Lord God. I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's D. I don't care if it's anybody. There's something in our lives where we are disrespecting you. If we are not honoring you reverently and with piety, and Father, in the name of Jesus, if we, have not, if we are not regarding you as the one who is literal, the controller of life and death in eternity and on this earth, we humble ourselves, we fall prostrate on our knees, and we give you our heart tonight, Father Lord God. We give you our soul and our spirit, and we surrender this night to your leading, to your son, to your spirit, and we simply say, Lord, I am a sinner. Cleanse me from this and restore and renew me into your presence and your fellowship. May the grace of the sovereign God live and abide on this earth. Father, I'm asking you as a priest of God and as a watchman of the generation that I'm in, Father, bring souls into your kingdom. Father, not, don't build church with other church people. Bring souls into your kingdom. Bring people of all colors, races, nationalities, and tongues, Father, Lord God. Bring people who want the holiness of God and stop the politics of religion and spiritualism and let us come simply as we are, humble, obedient servants, whose only consideration is what pleases you in sight of all men. In Jesus' name, amen.